What's up, y'all? You already know we back with another episode of Defiant Legacy. I'm your host, Theus Elijah McBee, and today's guest, we have none other than Mr. Bucky Rogers. He's the owner of Detroit Vending. So what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. So this is going to be the episode, first episode on vending machines. I know people have been waiting on it. So it's, it's here. It's here. It's here. So if you could, man, just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Uh, my name is Bucky. I'm from Detroit. Um, I'm 34. Um, born and raised in Detroit. I've uh, been doing vending machines pr- probably for like, uh, I want to say almost three years now. Okay. So three years. Um, and I've just been, I guess vending machines have become like more and more popular since COVID started with the pandemic and everything and people looking for a way to make passive income. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much everything. Yeah, that, and that's a fact, man. I think the, you know, unfortunately, obviously the pandemic is crazy, but it definitely turned and made people realize how much they kind of need something of their own. Um, and vending machines, as you mentioned, man, it is definitely something along those lines. Uh, so how did you get started um, in, in, the, in the, the vending machine business? Pretty much I was, honest, honest to God, true. I was like working the job. I had like a nine to five and uh, I saw a quote. I don't know where I saw that. It was on like a podcast or something. And it was like a Warren Buffett quote where it was like, if you uh, don't find a way to make money in your sleep, you'll work till you die. Yeah. Like, pretty much. And I was like, I don't want to work till I die. Like, I don't even, <laughs> I, I don't even want to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want to work till I die. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I scrammed up the change I had um, and was able to buy like my first vending machine. I started following people on Facebook, following people on Instagram who was into the vending machine business. And it was crazy because I've, use vending machines like all my life. You see people, there's vending machines everywhere. But I never like stopped to think who's making money off this. Mm-hmm. They was just there, but I would just put my money in it all day, but I would never like think who's collecting off of this. Yeah. So I just did my research. I follow people on Instagram. I follow people on YouTube and watch videos and tutorials and stuff. And I was able to get my first vending machine and then I've been rocking since then. Damn, well, well congratulations, man. Um, Thank you, man. And, and, I, and I was waiting to see if you would say, like, you obviously, you know, did YouTube University and just did your research, but did you have a mentor? Uh, I don't know if it was a mentor, per se, because, well, I used somebody called The Vending Biz. Okay. First, it was two people I asked, honestly. It was this guy named uh, Brandon Buffer, who I went to high school with, I played football with. Hmm. He was doing vending machines. He lives in Chicago right now, I think. And then uh, the guy, I think it's, I don't know his real name. But he has a platform called The Vending Biz on oh, yeah, Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And uh, I just followed a lot of his stuff, and I just went from there. Yeah, I mean, that, it's, it's so crazy to hear that, too. It's like, because not everyone always has a mentor to start, but just the idea of, like, you know, you're following certain people, and now you just got to take action on your own. Yeah, pretty much. And I, when I thought about mentor, I was like, instantly, I was like, I don't talk to him. Like, dude, he doesn't know me personally. Right, probably. right, right. But it was, it's somebody I just kind of, like, follow his steps did everything he he told me to do. And I just went on YouTube. Um, there's like three or four other pages that I can't name right now. Of mm-hmm. People who do vending machines and they record everything and show you what to look out for. So I, that's pretty much what I did. Yeah. I mean, and they provided the blueprint and you really just followed it. And now you exactly. kind of have your own. You kind of have your own. Exactly. So talk, talk to me though about that, that first um, moment that you decided to choose vending machines over anything else. Not to say that you don't have other investments, but you know, what, what made you decide to go that route? Um, well, I felt vending machines, first off, you get a vending machine for like $800 to like $1,000. What did I pay? I paid like $1,200 for the first okay. vending machine. So I felt like it was a small enough investment where it wouldn't matter. It wasn't like I needed like $10,000 or $50,000 yeah. or stuff like that. It was something where I could like buy it and then make money off of it. If it, if it was a total bust, if it was a loss, it wouldn't be like that big of a loss. It wasn't going to break me. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. So that's that's pretty much why I wanted to do it. Um, yeah, and I had, I had like mentorship. It was like, not mentorship, but I was able to follow people. It seems like everybody does real estate now, so you mm-hmm. don't really know who to follow or mm-hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody has their own particular ways of doing it, whether they're doing like wholesale or like just fixing properties up and flipping them. There's so many different ways to do that. I feel like I just needed something that was just like concrete and it wouldn't hurt if it was a loss. Yeah. Pretty much. That's why I decided to do vending machines. Yeah. And, and, you know, on social media too, sometimes, like I said, it's tough to tell 
between the real and the fake, like who's actually exactly. you know, doing it. Cause you know, social media and the cloud and all that. Um, yeah, for sure. But you know, you, you mentioned your, your first one, I think you said for, for 1200 and you can get one between like 800 to a thousand. I think you heard you say, where did, where did you get yours? Uh, I bought, well, I bought my first vending machine from uh, like this warehouse that's mm-hmm. out in, where is it? It's in Troy. Um, and the guy who, who like sold it to me, he does vending machines like full time. Like this is his job. Yeah. So he was real cool about it. He taught me like how to program machines and things like that, what to put in there, what not to put in there. He helped me deliver them. He was like, um, I told him the spot I was going to uh, have the vending machine at. And he told me like what to look for in good spots. My first spot was okay, but it wasn't like the best spot. I still have it to this day. Mm-hmm. And it still makes money, but it's not like the most profitable in the world. Yeah. It was like a decent spot for my first vending machine. So it was a good learning experience. Hopefully, Luckily, he was like a real cool guy and was, you know, just looked out for me and was able to tell me the ins and outs. Yeah. And I mean, that's dope, too, because I mean, it was still your first one. You know what I'm saying? So I'm yeah. sure it's one of those situations where you still can kind of learn as you go. Um, exactly. But what what was uh what was it that you were selling? Uh, so the first one I bought two machines actually. I, it was a pop and a snack machine. So the snack machines were like they just had <laughs> chips, you know the typical stuff. Doritos, no, no, my fault. I, I, I laughed because you said pop. Yeah, pop. Soda. <laughs> <laughs> pop, man. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You got it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it was like just chips, uh, like all the regular. I guess most famous chips, Doritos, yeah, Nacho, Cool Ranch, Cheetos, Flamin' Hots, and then you usually choose like a regular chip, and then you have like the chocolate, Snickers, Twix, Reese's, um, M and M's, peanut M and M's, that type of stuff, and then you have some type of like sweet stuff, like cookies or cupcakes or donuts or something like that. Yeah, so, and then pops, yeah, pops are just like all the all the major ones, Pepsi, Sprite, Mountain Dew, that stuff. And so where did you actually get all of these uh, products? Uh, I got them from Sam's Club. That's okay. where I still get most of my stuff. You want to get it from a major warehouse like Sam's Club or Costco or BJ's or something like that. Something Somewhere where you can buy stuff in bulk. Yeah. So you get like yeah. you know, a little membership, go there yeah, you however, like however all the time you need. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'll be good for like the year. I think Costco, I don't even remember how much it is. I want to say it's like $50 maybe, but that's for like the year yeah. or something like that. Okay. Okay. I mean, and that's, uh, again, we talk about investing, you know, investing in yourself. Exactly. You know, when you look at the bigger exactly. picture, that's, you know, that's, that's something that you should definitely uh, consider. But so how do you go about location? Uh, location is key. Location is like the most important thing. Uh, so there's a couple ways to go about location. You can either go door to door, which is what I did pretty much. You can like put it on Facebook and like your social media and try to get people who are like interested who own businesses who want a vending machine in their in their business. That happens a lot. But to me, I find like the most effective way is just to be door to door, go in, be professional, ask them if they're interested in a free vending machine and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And most people are down for it as long as they don't have to be the one to do any extra work, and it's not like taking away from their business. Most people are good with it. Yeah, and I was gonna say too. Obviously, you know, when you're talking to business owners and things like that, how does uh, the profit work like do you pay them like rent in a way for a vending machine or is it is is, is how, how does that uh, usually go go about happening um so i guess like the industry standard is somewhere between like five to ten percent or you can get it in there free um i try to get most of my machines for free you don't i usually don't bring up commission um because most owners don't even bring it up unless you bring it up first <laughs> you know what i'm saying um, but then if, if they do come to a point where you have to have a commission, the, the, I guess, industry standard is like five to 10%. Anything past that usually isn't worth it. So yeah. five to 10% of your profits, um, and you can work that out to be like monthly or quarterly or however you guys want to do it. But usually that's something that should be like established right when you put the machine in. Okay. True, true, true. I mean, that, that makes sense too. Um, so how do you go about like, which one do you, do you try to figure out first? the location or like the product of what you're going to put in that vending machine. I do you get the vending machine first and then say like, all right, let me go find a location. First location is always first because locations are different. Like some locations might need just a pop machine. Some might need a snack machine. Some might need both, 
But if the location isn't big enough for both, then that changes the machine. Like you can't get two individual machines. You might have to get a combo machine where it's like pop and like snacks in the same machine, you know? Um, and then machines are different sizes. There's like five wides, which means there's like, you can put five items on like each row or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it goes all the way down to three or four wide. So yeah. it depends on like what, what you know, the, the place of business, you have to measure it. And then from there, you decide on what type of machine will be best. Sure. And how many people are going to be there. I yeah. have a machine that's in like a nail salon where there's only like 20 people in there, but those people use the machine every day and their yeah. customers use the machine every day. So it's a small machine. It probably only has like, it has like maybe three or four different pops and then like maybe seven or eight snacks, but it sells out. And then I have like machines that are like a school where it's like these big wild machines that have like hundreds of products in it. Okay. So it just depends. It depends on where you place it. Got you. And, and, that, and that's another thing too. So you mentioned a nail salon, a school, um, or else you think a, a, a barbershop maybe? Obviously we talk nail salon. So just, you know, trying to think of ways where people can actually, you know, place them um, location wise. Um, but talk, talk to me too about a target audience. Cause I think I saw on your Instagram, one tip you have for people was, you know, if you're going to have a vending machine and a gym, let's say, maybe you want to think about having healthier products. So how does the target audience impact or affect uh, what it is that you have in, in the machines? It's a big deal. It plays a big part because like you said, if you have a machine in the gym, people are trying to be healthy. You want to change the snacks. You Most of uh, the products in the gym vending machine are like baked chips or it might be like energy bars or like uh, Gatorade or water and stuff like that. Stuff that's pretty much on the healthier side or like trail mints or something like that. Uh, the stuff you put in like a high school, those kids don't care. I didn't care when I was old, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you put pop, candy, whatever you think is going to sell. Quiet is kept. It's like usually healthy vendor machines don't sell that well. Mm. Even, even though you want to and you want to be like, have a positive outlook on it and like, I'm going to do like an organic vending machine. Yeah. They don't sell. I've tried it. Everybody I know in the vending business has tried it. And for some reason, they don't perform that well. Hopefully that changes in the future because everybody's on the healthy kick now and I'm yeah. all for being healthy, but they don't, they just don't make the money that a regular vending machine makes. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, look, it's still a business, right? So, I mean, you want people to eat healthy, but you also want to make money. It's, it's almost like if someone, you know, I had to say it, but they were, they were to buy like a liquor store. It's like, you know, it definitely sucks that it's selling, but. <laughs> what you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> if people buying it, then, Hey, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. I mean, too. So how would you say like your rapport and building relationships with business owners have gone when it comes to pitching the idea of a vending machine? Uh, a lot of people are happy about it because they feel like it's keeping customers in their business. Like I always use the example, like say you have a laundromat, right? Yeah. And if I'm a parent and I have to take my kids with me to the laundromat, it's way more convenient to like, be able to get them snacks, get them something to drink while I'm at the laundromat rather than like do the laundry and then they get hungry or something. Mm -hmm. Now I have to load all the kids back up in the car. Hopefully nobody steals my clothes. Mm -hmm. Go somewhere, <laughs> go somewhere and try to get them something to eat and then come back to the laundromat and do all of this extra stuff. It's a mm -hmm. lot more convenient to just have everything in store and you're more likely to go to that laundromat if you know everything is there that you need. Yeah. If you have a laundry mat and there's nothing there, you more than likely will find somewhere where everything's convenient or something like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of a lot of business owners are good with it as long as it's not, like I said, taking money out of their pocket and it doesn't mean any extra work for them. Yeah. And I mean, another question I was going to ask you is the idea of it being some sort of a passive income. Because to me, there's very few things that are truly, truly passive, right? You know, I think yeah. certain things do require work, but how much would you say is actually uh, required to to handle a uh, vending machines in terms of it being considered passive income? I, would consider it, I definitely would consider it passive income because I feel like, what what would you consider like really passive? Like I feel like vending machine is work, but it's like the minimum amount of work. Right. Like right. anything you do that's passive or you're, that you're going to make some type of money off of, you have to spend some time, even if it's not like physical labor, you have to spend some time researching it. You have to spend some time working on a computer right. or do something with it. So to me, it's passive because 
I literally could spend two hours and then be done for two weeks mm. and then just go back and collect. So I could spend like an hour at Costco or Sam's Club, buy the product, spend like another 45 minutes, hour, whatever, load in the machine, and then I'm done for like the next week or two weeks, however long. Mm. And then I just come back and collect it and then do it again. And then Re- that's how it repeat, goes. And then repeat and then repeat. Yeah, just repeat it. So talk to me, though, about uh, the idea of taking some of your profits and then reinvesting it back into your business, right? Buying, continuing to buy more products so that the business continues to flow. That was like really important to me because when I first started, I was like making money. And then I was like, I should just pocket this money or I should just like stash it or something like that. But at the end of the day, I had a goal. I was like, I want to get to like 10 machines. So for like the first, like I would say probably a couple of years, I didn't spend any of my money really. I just, every time I like got enough to buy another machine, I got another machine and just kept flipping it, kept flipping it until now where I have like almost 20 machines. And this it's great now. Now I go into there and get money out their bank account and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah. <laughs> no problem. Right, right. But it didn't really make sense for me. You could do it um, off of one or two machines, but I had a goal in mind where I wanted to be able to, have a whole like a real company as far as like just having like one machine. It felt like just like a side hustle. But now I still work my nine to five, but I do the vending machines too, just because oh, I right, have the right. time to. Yeah, right. so. So, so you have a nine to five right now. Yeah. So you have a nine to five and you have nearly 20 vending machines as well. Yeah. That's yeah. dope. Congratulations, man. Thank you, man. I don't have a lot of weekends free because I spend like my weekends doing the vending, but it's all worth it at the end of the yeah, day. I'll probably say, still be that, able to. That's a good problem to have, though. That, 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 yeah. you know, you make sacrifices <laughs> for that. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. It's not just nonsense. Exactly. And you have a, like an end goal in mind. Like I, I told myself I didn't want to work until I was like 65 or like mm-hmm. the regular retirement age. So if I can get out at like 45 or something like that, or even 50, mm-hmm. I'd be happy. That's mm-hmm. like 10, 15 years ahead of the game. And I could just do what I want to at that point. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And speaking of working in, in nine to five, right? So what happens, um, you know, if you had some sort of issue, let's say, knock on wood, but if you had some sort of issue with your vending machine while you were at work, like, like I, I don't know what problems or, you know, technical issues might arise with the vending machine, but what, what, what kind of goes about that? If something did happen, I usually have like labels on all the vending machines that have like my numbers on it or something like that. But most of the machines have like somebody in place in that location, whether it's somebody that works there or something like that. I just pay them extra to like make sure everything is taken care of. So somebody, for whatever reason, this rarely happens. But if like something, if somebody, if the machine takes somebody's money and the product doesn't drop, then I have somebody at that location just to like give them their dollar back or something like that until I get there on that weekend and I'm able to make it right. Okay. So, I mean, too. One, you know, it's a great way of, of handling it. Um, but are there any other uh, problems that may uh, arise with vending machine as well? Because, I mean, you know, I, I want to paint the, the whole picture, right, and make sure that, because I know, too, as an entrepreneur, I, you know, there's certain things, like, it's not always sweet, if you will, right? It, it's not always sure. pretty, you know, so is there anything that you might tell someone, to like, all right, when you get started and something happens, here's how to overcome it? Um, pretty much, I would advise people just to learn the actual vending business and try to get a mentor because when machines break down, they can be expensive to fix. Like it's $200 just to have somebody come out and look at it Mm. before they even touch it. It's just $200. And then it's like $75 an hour Mm. to have them fixed. But most of the things that will go wrong is simple things. Like you just hit a power button by mistake and now the machine won't turn off or something like that. Or it could be fixed with like a flathead or any type of screwdriver. Like most of the issues. So you just have to learn the machine, learn the business. Um, I will also advise people like just to make sure to, so since the big pandemic started, there was like a lot of things that closed down. Mm-hmm. So my machines was in like a lot of businesses that were closed. Like barbershops weren't open for a while. <clears throat> Nail salons. Um, everything. What else? G- gyms, everything. everything. Yeah. So the only things that stayed open were like laundromats, um, what else? I think it's like car dealerships or like car repair, stuff like that. Those things stayed open. Hotels stayed open for the most part. So I would advise people to go after those things. Like 
if you can get them in school, schools probably make the most money or like hospitals make the most money. Mm. But if something goes wrong, then schools are going to close, stuff like that. So you want to keep that in mind. Hospitals always stay open. Uh, laundry mats stay open. Car repair places stay open. So that's like a for sure thing somebody will want to keep in mind when like they're doing their location. Yeah. And that's a huge adjustment too. I mean, like everyone kind of had to deal with that adjustment. What happened, you know, with, with COVID and, and the whole pandemic. I think like, exactly. like, like we said earlier in the episode, I think being able to adjust and either start something right. new or fix what, you know, may not have been working for a little while. Um, right. But I mean, you meant now, I mean, you, so we added hotels um, and laundry mats, right. To that, to that list of places that you can kind of um, look into, but talk mm-hmm. to me too about uh, determining uh, price for for your products i'm sure obviously that's you that that determines of course but is there some type of method or percent of of return that you're looking for uh so there's a couple ways to do it when you go to sam's club or costco or bj's there's usually they have the sticker price so the price is like in the middle it'll show like um the price for the whole box and then to the left that top left hand number it shows how much is in the actual box and then the right it shows like the um the price for like the individual yeah yeah packet right so i usually just charge like whatever it is like say if i buy like a box of honey buns right and it's like 12 the math probably wrong but i'm just saying it's like 12 honey buns in the box and each honey bun breaks down to like i don't know 25 cents or something like that Mm -hmm. all right or let's say 50 cents i would charge probably like a dollar or a dollar 25 so I'm making, I'm at least making like 75 cents right. profit on each honey bun. That's, I don't try to, and then you have to keep in mind of where you put in the machine. Like if you put in, you can't charge like 250, 350 for like a pop if it's like in a high school, because some kids ain't got money like right, that. Right, 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 right. In the hospitals, they have money like that. They have like debit cards or credit cards and they just, you know what I'm saying, swipe their life away. But in high schools, it's not really like that. So yeah. you want to adjust the price depending on where your machines are at. And um, you want to, Keep it at a price where you're making profit, but it's not like it's likely to sell. It's not too high that it's not people aren't going to want to yeah, buy. Yeah, it. it's a it's it, it's a give and it's take. It's a balance. Yeah, yeah. But there's see, really talk- no formula for it, but I just try to go with a price where I'm comfortable with the profit, but it's still affordable for people. Yeah. And uh, two, you mentioned the idea of cash versus card. So, do you yeah. have a preference? Uh, definitely cards. <laughs> definitely cards. <laughs> it just makes things easier. You don't have to go and pick up and like collect as often. Um, and you make a lot more money because I carry cash still, but I don't carry like a lot of cash. Um, and a lot of people don't carry cash. That's like right. the thing now. A lot of people just carry their card or whatever. So um, it's really no excuse. Like once somebody has a card, then most places take cards. So it's, it's just easier and you make more money that way. But I still have a few machines that still do cash only or whatever. So. It just depends on where they're at. Yeah. Okay. So also too, um, in, in terms of like the, the different vending machines that you own, you mentioned now that you're you're nearly at 20. And I think mm-hmm. kind of to put it on perspective, how were you able to scale? Right. How how are you able to grow? And I don't just mean from a, a money standpoint, but just the idea of like obviously we all start somewhere. So to go from right. like, you know, watching YouTube videos and not knowing yeah. you know anything at all about vending machines to now yeah. pushing 20 or nearly 20. Um, it just takes time. You have to be patient, of course, but it really is very doable. You just have to, um, be willing to not spend the money. Like when you make money, if you, let's say you make, I don't know, $500 a month on one machine, Mm. the, like (laughs) the focus and determination it takes to not spend that money, especially if you broke and you really ain't got it like that to reinvest in your business. That's like a skill you might as well just master because if that's what if your goal is to get to 20 machines or 10 machines, then that's something you're gonna have to do, or else you'll just never get there. So I acted like I didn't even have the money. I just literally just kept spending my nine to five money and acted like this vending machine money didn't exist for a long time. I just saved up, bought another machine, used that money, saved up for a couple months, bought another machine, and then I just kept going. And it gets easier the more machines you have. So Getting to 20 machines isn't, it's not as daunting of a task as like you would think it is. If you have the, if you have the drive to do it, you could do it relatively quick. It's not mm-hmm. that hard. And they're, and they're all near you. 
right? Yeah, yeah okay. they're on near me. Okay. No, a lot of people sell their machines because they're too far or you have to move or something like that. And it gets to be a, a hassle. Like having 20 machines already is like having another full-time job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you don't want to have them on top of, you don't want to have 20 machines on top of having to drive like an hour or two away mm. just to restock them. So, yeah. And it's I was going to have them close. You know, you're, you're doing all this by yourself, right? Oh, uh, yeah. I have like a little brother who helps me time okay. to time, but it's both, it's mostly by myself. He only helps when he wants some Jordans or something. <laughs> and you know what though? Uh, I will say definitely shout out to you though because one thing I always say on the show too is like a important part of financial literacy is passing down education right definitely. so you know if, if you're you know guiding slash mentoring him in, in that way of like all right you know here, here's the game and how you do it that, that's mm-hmm. you know, definitely dope in itself and then you know so do, do you think do you think uh, he'll eventually have a machine of, of his own at some point uh, I think he will whenever if I ever like sold my business I would give him machines, but I think he's pretty, he's pretty set and focused on like having his own machines and having his own route. Um, uh, cause he's seen the money I made from it. Mm. And he's he's pretty determined to like he wants he wants a job, but he's pretty determined to not put his financial like uh right. security in anybody else's hands. Right, 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 right. And, and and it sounds as if you know vending machines can definitely um allow you to do that. Um, especially sure. like you said, you go from one uh to twenty. And the reason why I asked that. You know, the idea of, you know, them all being close to you, because I know when people talk about real estate, you know, you can have properties in different states. Mm-hmm. Um, but with vending machines, you know, it sounds like you want to be more hands on. Right. Yeah. You want to have them closer in a closer proximity. So you're able to service them. If something happens, if an emergency happens, if I had to, I could go like do everything like as soon as I get off work yeah. and just go handle it. If it was too far, like a couple hours away, then it might have to wait till the weekend. And at that point, you could have missed out on a lot of money, but mm-hmm. so you, you never know. Yeah. I, I prefer to keep everything close. So if I have to, I don't want to like go to the vending machine every day. But if I had to, as soon as I got off work, I would just go ahead. Yeah, because I was going to say too, man, to to have to. I'm assuming they're all in different locations. You know, yeah. Check on you know you know your vending machines in all the different locations. Let's say in one day, can right. you? Even though they're yours and it's your businesses, it could still be a little yeah. time consuming. It is. It is. I try to wake up early as I can and just do it and get it over with. Uh, some machines are they're in different locations, so they usually have like uh, some machines sell out faster than others. Mm-hmm. Some machines can sell out. It takes them like maybe two weeks. Some of them take a week. Some of them can take like two or three days, depending on how busy the location is. But most of mine are like every two weeks, every week to two weeks. So it gives me time to like do what I got to do during the week. And then if I wake up at like six, seven, I could be done by like hopefully 12 and have the rest of my day. <laughs> okay. okay. That's not bad. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, that still leaves some time for yourself to, like you said, enjoy the weekend and everything like that. Um, right. But so have all of them that you um, gotten, um, where, where, where else have they been? The actual vending machine themselves. Kind of like the first one you said was from a warehouse. But where, can, where else can people actually buy um, the physical vending machines? Uh, so you can get them from a warehouse. I advise people getting them from vending machine suppliers, which is like the warehouse, because it's easy to like, you can build a rapport with the people that work there. Um, they can help you get parts that may be hard to find. They help you deliver. Uh, most of the time you get them vending machine, they have like a warranty or something on them. So if they break down, you're able to get it fixed. Um, you, if you notice most vending machines have like the label on the front of it, it has like a number like a customer service number or something like that you can get machines from just calling that number and most of the time that's a company where they're selling their machines or they're selling their routes mm. and you can like just call them and offer them a price and see what they have to offer or um you can like get vending machines directly from companies like the like pepsi sells vending machines coca-cola sells vending machines it's a lot more stricter process yeah. but you can you can definitely do it that way um i was when I first got into the business, I found out about that and I looked into it. It was, it was, I probably wouldn't do it because they give you a free vending machine, but it's so many stipulations and things that come with it. Like they want to come see the space that the vending machine is going to be at. Damn. You can only sell their products. They want to know like how many people walk through the business every day. Um, and then they want like half your profits after that. So it wasn't, to me, it wasn't worth the headache. It's a free yeah. vending machine. 
but it's not worth the headache. I mean, if that's the case, y'all might as well just sell it. <laughs> you might, yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> the, whole, the whole point was, you know, to, to be able to have some for yourself. But now exactly. it just sounds like you're applying for a job. Exactly. That's, like you work for Pepsi now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, <laughs> is it mine or yours? Exactly. So I, I like vending machine suppliers because you can price it wherever you, the way you want. You can put it wherever you want. Uh, you can put whatever products in there, whatever whatever products you want. That's what you can put in the vending machine. Okay. Like with Pepsi vending machines, you can only put Pepsi products. Yeah. And I'm assuming, so, too, these are you know things that you probably Google, right? Just vending machine suppliers? Yeah, pretty much. You just Google vending machine suppliers. Um, I've helped people find vending machines, and they're, like, pretty much in, like, most major cities has a vending machine supplier. Or even if you, like, go so – if you're somewhere and you see a vending machine – and if it has a label on the vending machine that has like an 800 number or something mm -hmm. that you call for customer service or emergencies, you could just call them and they probably will sell you machines. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that could work too. Okay. So, <laughs> talk, to, talk to me too about how do you feel about Craigslist? Craigslist is good. Uh, websites like Craigslist. Uh, what else is there? Offer up or like Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, yeah. Those things are good. It's just, you don't want to get a machine and then something goes wrong and then that person is just like, you can't find them. Yeah. So I would only advise you to get a vending machine off Craigslist if you already are in the business and you know what to look for. Mm. You can test the machine and you know what's wrong with it relatively quick. You can tell if it's too old or if something might give you a problem because it might work like when you go check it. But if you're not experienced, you can't tell like this is going to go bad in like a month or two. Yeah. And like I said, it's expensive. So I try to just go with vending machine suppliers because most of the time they've had good machines. They're kept up to date. They're in good condition. And if anything goes wrong, you know the warehouse you bought it from. You can just go back and get your money back or have them fix it. Yeah. And so once yeah. you buy it, though, like what's actually the next step? Like, is it brought straight to that location or is it, you know, yeah, it's it brought to the location? That's why I, you, sh you should always have the location first. And then once you have a location, you measure out like the space that the vending machine is going to be in. And then that's when you go pick the vending machine. So you want to be able to make sure you can get a vending machine that fits into the space. You're able to fit it through the doorway. Uh, you try to avoid places that have like steps or something at the, at the entrance way because yeah. it just, it just, this is a lot harder. Yeah. So you want to choose it. Once you have a location, you literally measure it out wall to wall, sill in the floor, and then you go pick up the machine and have it delivered. And either they'll help you do it or you can do it yourself. But vending machines are heavy. Like vending machines are like between five to 800 pounds mostly. So you want to have like two or three guys if you can. And you want to have a truck that has a lift on it. Hmm. It's not something you could just like throw in the back of a pickup. Right, right. That, that's why I do like, I mean, you know, you're not just about to get it and then, you know, take it to your basement. Or exactly. I'm like, you know, where does it go from there? I assume obviously the location, but just to make sure everyone yeah. else knows. All right, here's the actual steps. Um, yeah, for sure. You got to have uh, like a truck with the lift. Even if you don't have a truck personally, you can like rent one or have somebody with the lift come get it. It's probably like a couple, like a hundred bucks maybe, yeah. or one fifty or something like that. Yeah. But but all of this again goes back to the whole idea of like you know just investing in yourself and kind of realizing that you pretty know, much sometimes pretty it much. takes money to make money. Exactly. If you did the right thing to get a good location, you can make that money back in like a month or two. Mm. And then after that, everything else is profit. If you chose a good location. <laughs> in fact, yeah, exactly. Yeah, make sure you add that. All right. So right. out of everything, right, obviously all of, all of them are important. But which one would you say is the top part that you said, like, all right, you need to make sure this is right. So whether it's the physical machine itself, uh, the product that you sell, uh, the location, which one is your personal like yo this has to be right everything else all right maybe but this has to be you know good to go no no if ands or buts about it the location the location has to be right the location has to be right because if the location isn't right then the whole thing is a bust mm. like the vending machine doesn't matter the products you put in there don't matter because nobody's going to see them the location just has to be right that's the main thing just because, like, for foot traffic, you mean? Like, just for the people that come in and out? Just or? for foot traffic, for people coming in and out. If you put a vending machine right next to, like, a building that has, like, uh, like if you put a vending machine in a laundromat, but the laundromat has, like, a dollar store next to it, I don't know how if you're going to sell. 
mm. because the dollar store is probably cheaper and it's people just want to go to the dollar store anyway right. to shop around. You know what I'm saying? Or if you put your vending machine in like a hotel, but it's like on a 10th floor or something like that, and nobody's even on the 10th floor. Mm. Like you want to put your vending machine in a lobby, right, where people can see it and people are able to like, they have to walk by it to get to the front desk or something like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So location is everything. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I would choose location over everything. Because okay. you can always switch to snacks. You can, you can, there's other ways to man- manipulate all the other factors except location. Yeah, uh, that's true. That's true. That's true. Because once it's inside, you know, it's inside. It's a, yeah, it's in there. So, so, <laughs> when you, so when you have like a possible establishment or location that you want to, I guess, go with, do you walk in there and kind of like look around, if you will? Like, do you shop for space, I guess? Or is it like, all right, I kind of uh, know. Cause I mean, cause I mean, you mentioned the whole hotel thing, and initially all I thought was just the lobby, but obviously now that I think about it some more, you know, there are some vending machines on the tenth floor, which may not mm-hmm. be the most ideal, but yeah, you kind of, you know, dictate that early on. Exactly. Uh, I do look around. I actually like that's one of the main that's one of the main reasons I prefer to go to the actual business and talk to the manager, so I can get an idea of like what the space looks like. Where would I put the machine if everything goes through? Stuff like that. Some people do like just cold calling or some people send out like direct mail where like they send a flyer in the mail or something like that. Yeah. I prefer to actually be in the building and get a feel for the Facts. feel for the building. And then you can kind of determine on like how many people come in here every day. If it's even big enough to have a vending machine, is this a good location? You don't want to put it at like a laundromat that's like in the corner somewhere, some abandoned strip mall that nobody goes to anyway. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's better just to go in for me and see the location and be able to determine what I want to do from there. Yeah. Do you have, do you ever yeah. um, reach out to like people that you know, like business owners that you already know? Or because I mean, you mentioned cold calling. So yeah, is it a mix of like, all right, my man owns a barbershop, let me hit him up. Or is it like, all yeah. right, there's a random hotel, so let me just walk in and see, you know, what type of time they're on. I do both. I when I first started the business, I was just hitting up like friends who I knew were like business owners who like uh had a barbershop or had like a like an auto repair or was a mechanic, like here, take my car, ask your boss, can you put a vending machine in there or something like that? Yeah. I you do that, but you eventually run out of friends. Like <laughs> you only have so many friends. So you gotta go outside of that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you get real comfortable with like just being presentable, wear like a polo, some khakis. Go into a business. Hey, sir, I'm a vending machine business owner. Have you ever been interested in like having a free vending machine put in your business? Mm. And I put an emphasis on free because people think you got to be charged or something to put a vending machine in there. And that's not the case. And most people go for it. Like usually the deals I turn down is because I turn them down. I don't really get shot down like that. It's just that I know it's not going to be beneficial to me to put a vending machine in that business because they don't have enough foot traffic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So talk to me, too, about the trust factor. And what I mean by that is, you know, after you say, you know, five to 10 percent that they would possibly get if they did mention it. Um, yeah. Do you have to, like, show them uh, proof or, or receipts of your actual profit or? Uh, yeah. So what, what would happen is, like, the first couple of weeks, I will, we will just count the money together. I'll empty it and then we'll go to, like, a back room and we'll just count it. And, like, I usually wait for, like a month. Because sometimes it takes time to, for people to realize that the machine is actually there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I give it a month. So after a few weeks, you can kind of tell like what your what your like average income will be from the vending machine. And then I we go back there, we count it, and then we, I just give my average price of what like what I would make if I'm making like three hundred dollars every two weeks or four hundred dollars every two weeks from this location. Then we could talk about a five to ten percent thing. Right. After that, if they go higher than that, then I usually just like, I don't even want to do it anymore because it's cutting too deep into the profits and I still got to pay taxes on all this stuff, not to mention a product or something like that. I've had companies like actually just give me money for the vending machine. Like we'll give you like $500 or like $1,000 just to leave the vending machine here mm-hmm. and then do it like that. Got you. So it's not like you sold it, but they're just like, all right, you know, it's a mutually agreement. Like, all right, you know, let's. Yeah, it's like, it's like yeah. almost like they're renting the vending machine. Yeah. Yeah. So do you put the machine in in that month example and then wait, um, wait the 30 days or the month 
to determine the actual percent agreement? Uh, yeah, I count the we count the money like every week or every two weeks, depending on how busy it is. And then like at the end of the month, we can kind of figure like, okay, so this is probably what this is going to be like every month or every couple of weeks. Okay, is, is is correct me if I'm wrong, but is is that a little risky? Uh, it can be. It can be. But like I said, that's why I never go above 5%. I try to get in free. But okay. if I have to do a commission, I usually do 5%. It can be risky because it can be just be dead like the first couple of weeks and then go crazy like later on as far as like sales and stuff. Mm. But that very rarely happens. That's why I usually wait like a month mm. and give it time for people to know that it's there and stuff like that. Yeah. And so, I mean, you mentioned 5 to 10%, but there, is there ever a time where you would consider going with a fixed amount? So like regardless of what the profit was, I would be having to be. I would have to make a lot of money. Yeah, on yeah, 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 yeah. I would have to make a lot of money because that's a risk. Because that's a risk. That's a risk. That's that a is. Risk. That's a huge risk. Like, um, I don't know. One of George got who I bought my first vending machine from. Mm-hmm. He has a vending machine in a school, like in a high school, that does probably like three or four thousand dollars a month, and he's like in a school. Yeah, but he doesn't pay anything because it's like a contract he signed with like the whatever the school is, like the board of education or like the food department or something like that. But he was like, I would never do like a percentage deal or like I would probably do a fixed thing with them, but it would only be like a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah, I, I respect it. <laughs> okay. But at two hundred dollars out of four thousand dollars isn't bad. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you're, if you're making like now. Nah, to like two hundred dollars out of six or seven hundred dollars is a big difference. Right, 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 right. We talking. You know what I'm saying? You see your problem. Exactly. Then it's like I would have to be making like thousands of dollars off of like that location. Yeah, and he's doing it out of a school. Yeah, out of a school that sells out like every week. Because kids like sugar, man. Those yeah. kids. <laughs> it's so sad, school, but it's true. Be, it's true. I was at the vending machine like every day, all day. Oh, like it's swing classes, lunchtime, whatever. Skittles, Skittles and, and Starburst. Yep. And yeah. That, that was my thing, bro. I would get some Flame Hot Cheetos and like an orange Fago, and that was it. <laughs> so, <laughs> all day. So, all right. So, like, so, let me think about the location we covered schools, okay. nail salons, barbershops, hospitals, hotels. Right, these are all places that people could, you know, laundromats. Yeah. Laundromats, you could do like apartment complexes, mm. office buildings. Mm. Uh, what else? Like uh, auto, like car dealerships, auto dealerships. Um, what else? Libraries, if you can get into that. Mm. Gyms. Um, I don't know. When a, when a, I have a location. I even have a location in like a halfway house. Because mm. like I had a friend uh, who I went to middle school with who I haven't talked to in years, and she just hit me up out of nowhere and said, like, her uh, father passed. He had left her, like, uh, a halfway house, halfway house, like, facility in her name or whatever, and they wanted to put vending machines, like, in the game room or whatever. And it was good. That's, like, one of my one of my better locations mm-hmm. because after they have to, they have a curfew. So, like, after 7, 8 o'clock, they can't uh, go anywhere. So, like, <laughs> it's supply and demand at that point. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Once once curfew hits, yeah, they're there. They're like no time. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times you don't even get hungry till late at night. Yeah, so that's perfect. perfect. That's perfect yeah. for the vending machine game. Yeah, exactly. So, so all right. So overall, right on a scale of one to ten, how difficult would you say the vending machine game is? Uh, difficult. I wouldn't say it's difficult. I won't say it's difficult at all. And so it's anyone difficult. can do it. You feel like. Anyone, anyone can do it as long. I don't want pe- I don't want people to think it's like a get rich quick scheme because it's definitely not that. Right. There is some level of work you do have to go to the store. You do have to stock the machines. It does take effort to buy a machine and actually do find a location and stuff. But once you're there, it, it's golden. Is it pretty you quick to, to stock the machines though? Is it pretty quick? Yeah, it's pretty quick. Okay, it's yeah. real fast. Yeah, I, I was wondering that part too. That. And the idea of like just uh, grocery shopping for, you know, that in bulk. Because I'm sure at this yeah. point you have a list of just, all right, bam, bam, bam. I'm going to knock yeah. this out and then slide. Yeah, because it's the same things every week. And then once you get a membership, 
you can like just order stuff and then just go there and pick it up. You don't even have to shop around anymore. So that saves you time. And then like you you know how much you start to know like this place sells out every week or this machine sells out every two weeks. So then you can kind of set a schedule. Like I'm gonna hit these this weekend. I'm gonna hit those next weekend because those are gonna last till next weekend. Yeah. And after that, it's just like it's pretty much just like all about building a system. It's clockwork. It's clockwork. Yep. And, and, and just overall, like, you know, once you get your reps in, after a while, yeah. sure, just like, all right, I know what to do now. Yeah. You don't gotta, yeah. but you know, you don't even going, think about it. Yeah, going through the earlier stages can be a little rough for people. Uh, but yeah. speaking of that, though, let's let, so let's take it just um, to, from the top, right? So obviously, okay. if someone hears this episode, hopefully they're inspired to start their own video machine business and get their own, right? So right. what would be the first thing you tell them after YouTube University after listening to this, right now, the mm-hmm. action step was the first thing. Let's walk through that journey again of, of what to do to get your first vending machine. To get your first vending machine. All right. Let's say so if you want to make it like a legitimate business, you know, you have to get like an LLC and like an EIN number and then get like a business bank account. The first step after that would just be to find a location before you even get the vending machine. You have to get a location and put the money to the side. Put Somewhere between a thousand to twelve hundred, thousand and fifteen hundred dollars aside for the vending machine, and then you have to just find a location. Go out, um, find a location. The more people, the better. I wouldn't do anything that's less than like I don't know, probably let's say fifty to sixty people a day. Okay. You know that's like that's like okay, and then sixty to probably eighty people is good, and then anything over that is great. Mm. You know. So you want to find a location that has as much foot traffic as possible. And then you would uh, go in, measure the space, see how big the space is, and then you buy your vending machine according to the space that you have. Okay. And after that, you get it delivered. Um, you can stock it with the, like, everybody puts in the same stuff at first because we all pretty much like the same things. Yeah. Doritos or Cheetos or Snickers or Reese's, whatever. And then um, one thing I do is I put like a recommendation list on a vending machine so people can put what they actually want in the vending machine. So I'm not guessing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So after like the first couple of weeks, I know what people want to have in the vending machine. Mm. And then I'm able to get those products and put them in there. So I'm not just guessing every week at what's yeah. going to sell and what's not going to sell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now, so now you do that. You have your actual, you know, you got the, the list, you have your location, you got your machine right you know yeah. talk about getting your uh, supplier um so now right. when you go to the store right is, is it yeah. a, is it a simple get a sam's or bj card and just buy in bulk and that's it or is there any type of extra stuff that needs to be done uh it's usually you just go to sam's buy in bulk uh you know what chips you want you know what candy you want you buy that um yeah and you want to just pay attention to the dates most most like cookies or donuts and stuff, they have like an expiration date. Mm-hmm. So you want to usually pick something that's kind of far away so it doesn't expire real fast. Okay. You never know how much, how long things may take to sell. Mm-hmm. If you have a good location, it shouldn't take that long, two weeks at the most. Yeah. But yeah, you want to make sure you're not getting anything that's close to expiration. Right. Please. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then there are, there are like licenses or like a sales tax license, depending on where you stay. Um, in Michigan, there is a sales tax license, but other states I know of, they don't have that or like yeah. uh, food license and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. If you're selling like sandwiches or something, oh, yeah. you have to have a food license. Yeah. yeah. For now, I think if, I, again, if I had to guess, when people first get started, they probably might just stick to like chips and, you know. Yeah. Um, you stick to the snacks. <laughs> yeah. Keep it, keep it basic to get started. Because I did see yeah. on your Instagram story, though, I think you mentioned the idea of vending machines that sell, you know, other stuff. Yeah, um, there's I've seen, seen vending machines that sell like you know like liquor. Like I've been in, I've been in strip clubs that have like liquor, like Ciroc bottles or like stuff like that. Yeah. Or in studios that have that stuff. Or like I don't know, they have they have vending machines that sell cigarettes. Or like I've seen vending machines that sell like PPE, like masks and gloves and hand sanitizer mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. So it it just depends. You know? So so after now. Right, you got your vending machine now, right? You got your location. It's now inside. You you've you you've loaded it, right? I'm assuming you know you, you do that part by yourself. Now yeah. comes the best part. 
right, is, is the collecting of profits. How, how, how does that day work slash, um, you know, talking to uh, the manager of the building? Uh, well, the day you collect, you pretty much, um, I always go prepared, just like to restock just in case. Um, but you just go, you usually have like a money bag or like a deposit bag. Um, and you go collect. If you have to do a commission with the business owner, you would collect and then you just go in the back with the manager or whatever. You would count it out. Let him see the amount. He, you can count it. He can count it. It doesn't matter as long as you guys agree on the same number. Yeah. And then um, from that point, you would just discuss his 5% or the 10%, whatever you agreed on. And then you would give them to that. You could do that like every time you pick up or you could do it monthly or you could do it quarterly. It just depends on what yeah. you guys agreed on. All right. Perfect. And the last part, yep. right? Repeat. <laughs> yeah. Do it all over again, right? Do it all over. Yeah. Do it all over you just again. Restock. And then uh yeah, you can restock. If something isn't selling, don't be afraid to switch it out. I've done that plenty of times. If like certain bag of chips isn't working, then you just put something else in there. Yeah. Uh one thing I had to learn was everybody doesn't like what you like. So um just because you like Oreos, everybody doesn't like Oreos. So don't be afraid to switch something out and try different things. Um, you're not going to sell out completely out every time. It takes a while to realize what sells and what doesn't sell. So, and then different locations like different things. Like, like I said, the gym has different products than a high school does. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you just want to pay attention to like the environment, what you think is going to sell and then what doesn't sell, just switch it up. Cause yeah. uh, it's all about making money at the end of the day. Facts. That's dope. I yeah. mean, the biggest thing, you know, to touch on too, is just, again, y'all, the, the different types of locations and I guess different types of products that you can have too, you know, it's For sure. definitely out there. I think, you know, obviously sure. like said, the snacks and, and, you know, the soda um, are the most popular ones probably, but location wise, you have a lot of options in front of you. Um, so yeah, man. So um, one of the last questions or the last question I have for you, is a question that I have for all the guests that appear on Defiant Legacy. Um, okay. and that question is, how do you want to be remembered? Uh, I want to be remembered as somebody who worked hard, who wasn't afraid to put in the work on his goals, and somebody who like left the left the world in a better place than I found it. I left my people in a better position than we were in mm. when I got here. You know, yeah. So that's part of the reason I, I like work with my little brother. I do podcasts. I do interviews for free and I just give away the information because I feel like if this information was given to me earlier then I wouldn't have struggled as long as much as I had yeah you know what I'm saying if somebody was able to you know learn about investing earlier at like 10 or 12 they wouldn't have struggled in trying to get it together at 40 45 mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying it would have been a lot easier so if I can make somebody else's path easier then it would have been without me then I did my part yeah. And, and like I said, like trust, like generational wealth, I think a part of that, obviously, you know, it's passed down money, but education, yeah. knowledge, education, yeah, information. Because <clears throat> like, then, then you reach a point where, you know, I feel like you don't really need as, as much help and you're not as relying yeah. on, on, on others for that. Um, exactly. But but yeah, man. So if you could, man, just drop uh, your social. And I, and I know I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought I heard you say you have an ebook on the way that you're that you're preparing. Yeah, so uh, I have an ebook coming. It should be done. I'm actually finishing it up right now. So hopefully I can have it done by the end of the month. Um, but that should be coming soon. And it's pretty much all the, my exact people that I like use for vending. Um, it goes step by step through what I just told you right now. Yeah. How to set up a, like a business account, EIN numbers, LLCs, um, where to get products, how to pitch to business owners, things like that how to determine what's a good location, what's a bad location, how to know what's a good machine, what's a bad machine, and things like that. It goes into more into detail about everything. So that should be coming at the end of the month. Yeah. Okay. Def, def, def. Um, so yeah, 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 definitely make sure you check it out. Um, but where can people follow you on uh, Instagram and Twitter and even Clubhouse? <laughs> yeah, everything Everything is Bucky Rogers, man. B-U-C-K-Y-R-O-G-E-R-Z on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Clubhouse, all that good stuff. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah we definitely gonna you know connect and, and again you know stay in touch and everything like that. Um, but again, man, I mean, is there any uh, final or last words you want to say for the audience, vending, vending machine wise or financial literacy wise, whatever? 
Uh, yeah, man. I would just advise everybody to just follow, follow your goals. Don't be afraid to like try things. Um, I didn't think I would like turn into like some vending machine expert when I first started or anything like that. Not to say I am an expert, but I didn't think it would be like this. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, don't be afraid to like put in the work. Like everything is in the cakewalk. Don't be afraid to work and make mistakes. But as long as you keep going, you'll be good. And uh, that's pretty much it. Learn as much as you can. Facts. Just learn. Right. Just, that's it. Just learn. <laughs> just learn yeah. and define your legacy. So on that What's note, up? y'all, again, Bucky Rogers, all right? Owner of Detroit Vending. Appreciate you, man, for the vending machine episode. A lot of people needed this. I definitely think it's going to help. All right. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.